Hi, I'm Paul Peterson. I'm the editor of Education Next, and I have with me today uh, Michael Henderson, who's a graduate student at Harvard University and the author of a new article in Education Next entitled In the Wake of the Storm. It's all about uh, Louisiana and New Orleans in particular uh, in the years after Katrina, focusing on the school vouchers that were passed in Louisiana. And the amazing thing about it is that when everywhere else in the United States, vouchers are in political trouble in Louisiana, always willing to defy the nation's uh, uh, basic patterns, has decided to put into place a new piece of legislation allowing students in the city of New Orleans to go to private schools with a scholarship program, something that a lot of people would call a voucher. So, Michael, uh, why did this happen in New Orleans? Thank you, Paul. Well, um, it, was, it really comes down to a few reasons, and it's uh, the, the, the trick of the story is trying to figure out how much of it is due to Louisiana being, as you say, something of a peculiar state, which it often is. Uh, and in this case, having the particularly peculiar situation of having had a storm devastate the New Orleans school system. Um, and so that was a big part of it, but I, I suggest that that's not the entire story. The, the Hurricane Katrina set the stage, but it was some political changes that happened uh, after the storm that really opened up this opportunity. So what were those political changes? Um, there were really statewide and local. Um, and, and at the local level, the storm really, um, for lack of another term, decimated the public school union in in the city of New Orleans. So the teachers union no longer really existed in any meaningful sense. F exactly. Well, how did that happen? Well, it happened because uh, before Hurricane Katrina, uh, Orleans Parish School System was the largest public school system in the state of Louisiana, and they, uh, the teachers union there, United Teachers of New Orleans, um, had essentially 7,000 members. Um, but after the storm, there was so much uh, devastation in terms of school buildings being destroyed, and then with the state takeover of most of the public schools, in the district um, that the school system itself was left with what amounted to about five schools that they directly managed. So did the teachers lose their jobs? They, they were all in um, uh, uh, January of 2006, the uh, school system uh, effectively laid off all of their employees. All of them? All of the teachers, except for a handful to, and, to and did they require, schools. then they hired a few back to teach in their few schools they, they had left? Exactly. Uh, so without any members, the union was gone. The union was gone. Now the union does still exist. There is still an entity there. There's still a name, and they you know, claim to have you know X number of members or so, and and they they say that they've been growing back, but um, but they were they were all laid off. So and that's one big change. No union. Mm -hmm. uh, what were the other big political changes? The other big political changes really happened at the state level. Um, two years after Hurricane Katrina, uh, Governor Bobby Jindal was elected to be uh, governor of Louisiana. And uh, Bobby Jindal, as you know, is a strong supporter of vouchers, uh, so much so that he has- Is he gonna run for president? <laughs> well, we'll have to wait and see. He's uh, making a lot of trips to Iowa, but we, we don't know yet. Um, I see, so, but anyhow, he's, uh, he's a sort of uh, attempting to be a rising star in the he, Republican Party. He seems party. to be, he seems is to be. Is this part of his strategy, uh, of vouchers, is that part of his strategy uh, to build a national reputation? You know, it's, it's really hard to say. It seems like it could be because this was a, um, this was a proposal that President Bush, when he was uh, elected in 2000, he talked about vouchers and something that he thought was a, a good idea for reforming education. Um, and so it seems like Bobby Jindal has taken up that as well. But what's interesting is when he ran for governor this last time, he really didn't mention the idea that much at all um, in, the, in the state race for governor. Um, but once he was elected governor, you know, it became part of his agenda in his very first, during his very first legislative So it term. isn't so much that he ran on vouchers, it was once he got into office, he pushed this bill. But how does a governor push it? What did he do to push this bill through the legislature? So he made several strategic choices um, that had to do with, uh, you know, just things that would make it more likely to pass. The fact that they called it scholarships rather than vouchers. Um, but the big part of it was that he lined up his support um, early on. Uh, before the bill itself got a lot of public recognition. And he did it by appealing to uh, uh, legislators from rural parts of the state, uh, mostly white 
re legislators from rural parts of the state, some of whom were Republicans, some of whom were conservative Democrats, who in the past had tended to not support vouchers. Um, but he was able to win them over. So he won the people from rural areas by saying what? This is for New Orleans er only. You're not going to be affected by it. It, it was. And besides that, I'll give you some money. It, it was. It was, a, it was a bit of all that. So he had the advantage of there were a lot of new legislators. And this is something that um, really makes the Louisiana case something uh, something of a unique uh, situation. Uh, they had passed 12 years before a term limits bill, uh, but of course the legislators at that time grandfathered all themselves in, so the clock didn't start on them until their next term. So 12 years after that was when term limits finally takes place uh, for the first time. So term limits 12 years later leads to vouchers. Right, because term limits 12 years later meant that Louisiana had something in the range of 55 to 60 percent turnover, uh, just unprecedented number of So of a strong governor, seats. a new legislature, a mm -hmm. hurricane, a decimation of a union, you can pass a voucher program very easily. Very easily. Well, you still have to manage it right. So, I mean, what Governor Jindal was able to do is his initial appeals was trying to um, build uh, a coalition among um, urban black Democratic legislators, and that didn't pan out. Now, some of the some of the um, the, uh, the sponsors of the bill, uh, Senator Ann Duplessis and uh, Representative uh, Austin Badon, um, were from the New Orleans area, and they kind of carried the the, the flag of this bill. Um, so there was just enough. Uh, minority support for this to give it uh, legitimacy. That's right. And this was the first time that had happened. In the past, uh, Louisiana for the last 15 years or so has rejected voucher bills and they tended to be sponsored by um, white Republicans from suburban districts. Um, and this was, this was different. There was a different face to the voucher appeal this time. Well, Michael, thank you very much. This is a really fascinating story, and I know our readers will want to uh, peruse your uh, prose on this uh, 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 further. Well, thank you, Paul.